So welcome back to the Steve Dahl Show. I am decidedly not Steve Dahl. I am I'm here too, Connor McNall. Oh, hey, Steve. I'm with you. I'm How you doing, you. guys? Good. You know, so we're out here at SoxFest 2018. We are sworn by Sox fans and honored to have our, our first guest of the SoxFest. It's uh, Hawk Harrelson. Maybe you guys oh, have heard of him. Yeah. The Hawkaroo. Yeah, just Hawkeroo. trying to get the cheese out between my teeth from that pizza I just had. <laughs> have a little Chardonnay wine sure, before I be started ready. on the Smirnoff. You got to be fortified, bro. Say, there you go, Stevie. You got to be fortified. <laughs> got to get your vitamins. I should be used to it. I played like that for nine years. <laughs> Just keep you staying loose. That's all. There you Stay go. Stay loose. Stay loose. How are you, Hawk? Everything is good. I tell you, I'm very excited. Really. You know, it's, it's a double-edged sword for me, being here for you know 33 years and um, being in broadcasting for 40. This is my 42nd. And all of a sudden, things have really come together for this organization. You know, last year, uh, when we broke spring training, we were polled at 29 and 30 as far as organizational prospects go. Right. When the season ended this year, we were polled at number one. That has never been done before in Major League history. And uh, it's going to be, I think, a great decade for Chicago baseball fans, both sides of town, because uh, we're going to be really good. The Cubs are good, and they're going to be good for a while. And it's going to be good just to kick their ass, I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> Hell yeah. Now, you're still, are you doing the Cubs-Sox games? You are. I am doing the three. I, I told you, I'll never step foot in Wrigley Field again. I'm going to. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm going to. <laughs> I'm going to do the three at our ballpark when they come over. That's in September. Yeah. In fact, I think my last game will be against the Cubs. And. Uh, it's going to be a fun. It's going to be a fun ten years. I mean, as I said, both teams are going to be very strong, and uh, we got two great managers in, in this city, uh, and Rick Renteria and, and Joe Madden. They know what they're doing, and we got two terrific general managers, Theo and Jed. They know what they're doing, and Seems Rick and like his it. guys. They know what they're doing. So, baseball fans in Chicago are going to be well served. Yeah, yeah, but we're going to miss you. Well, I'm going to I'm going to be around. I'm going to be a you know quote quote ambassador. Uh, you know, I'll be at the ballpark quite a bit, you know, meeting and greeting and signing some autographs, taking some pictures. And then we were thinking about, Bob Grimm and I were talking earlier, oh, Scott Reifer, thinking about maybe starting up a little thing. You know, Boston Red Sox do a great job uh, up in New England with a, a fund called the Jimmy Fund. It's uh, for cancer and children, and they hold a lot of golf tournaments. And we're thinking about starting up a, a new program. We hold one now for uh, uh, White Sox charities. And we're thinking about maybe putting more on the board, more yeah. on the table, you know, and, and I'll be coming up Festa Case and planning those one-day events, even though I stink. But uh, You stink at golf? I don't think so. Mm. Oh, I'm telling you, I'm so bad now. All the money I took for those guys for 40 years, they're all getting it back in spades now. <laughs> Compound interest. For what it's worth, guys, I was at one of the, uh, the, the White Sox charity golf tournaments uh, this past summer, and Hawk comes through, and I, I promise you this, walks off the cart, up to the tee, straight down the center of the fairway, about 350 yards out there, and I, I kind of gave up after that. <laughs> yeah. I can still hit it. My wrist feels good. Sure decent. can. I, I got to take anywhere from, you know, 12 to 16 Tylenol if I'm going to play 18 holes, though. And uh, but when they feel good, yeah, they they serve me well. They I can still hit it out there. Of course you can. So I'll tell you what, if you ever want to beat somebody badly, play with me. <laughs> no, I've seen your act. <laughs> <laughs> You'll feel so good about your game, you won't be able to stop playing. You got that right. <laughs> I am horrible, horrible. But getting back to the White Sox, you know, uh, when. When you do something like a redo like they've done, I've never seen this done. I've done a lot of thinking on it. And when you do a redo like they've done uh, to this extent, adding all those prospects, you know, with a uh, trade of Chris Sale and Adam Eaton and uh, Jose Quintana. Right. We, we loved those guys. We didn't, none of us wanted to see them go, but they had to in order to do the redo. Right. And. And what I'm so happy about, too, is White Sox fans, being some of the most knowledgeable in all of baseball, they understood it. 
and they have bought into it. I bought into it. You bought into it, Connor. Jerry Reinsdorf bought into it. Everybody's buying into this thing because it's real. You don't buy into something that's not, and this and this is real. Yeah, it seems like it for sure. Yeah. And also, we've had yeah. we've seen a good example of how it works on the on the north side of town too. Exactly. You know, you know, Dayton Moore in Kansas City really set the model. Uh, he bit the bullet there for a while, and then all of a sudden, the first thing you got to do in the game of baseball today is you got to start with a bullpen because I don't care how good your starters are, uh, they're not going to go more than five or six innings, you know, and then you got to go pick up those extra 12 outs or nine outs or whatever it may be every game. And if you don't have the guys in the bullpen to get it done, then you're going to lose. It's just that simple. Yeah. And Dayton set the model for that. And uh, that was one of Kenny's strong points as a, as a GM. He always had a good bullpen. And now, uh, you know, Rick and, and his guys are, are doing the same thing. They're trying to, we've got enough arms out there, talent. We've got enough possibilities to fill up a bullpen with some fire. I'm talking about some legitimate high 90, low 100 mile an hour fire. Yeah, yeah. And, and it it's, uh, gives you some confidence when you know that somebody can come in there and not completely blow the game for you. Yeah, it changes the whole complexion. changes the whole attitude of the ball club, you know, versus the other when you know you don't have anybody to come in there <laughs> and save it. You know you're probably, you know, going to blow the, blow the lead. But, uh, no, it's, not, it's going to be a different story. And uh, as I said, I'll be watching. Uh, Jason, Jason is going to be a terrific announcer. He's going to be here a long time. And, he and Steve will do a great job, and uh, of course Eddie and, and DJ when I, down, you know, in uh, our home and just outside of South Bend. I get the radio a lot, and I listen to them. And when I'm playing golf uh, at uh, Knollwood or else Lost Dunes, I'm listening to them. So I'll be listening to all the stuff going on. All right. Well, if you you know if you see, hear something you don't like, you know, check in with them and make sure you straighten them out. Oh, that'll happen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that'll happen for hey, sure. Hawks on the phone. Give that a call. Let them know. <laughs> yeah. There's such a thing called texting too. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> well, a Hawks text from the Hawk that would straighten me out right oh. away. I'd be like, whoa. Yeah. Hawk, yeah. I want to ask you, uh, you know, the White Sox had a member of their family go into the Hall of Fame just a couple of days ago. And Steve, I, I know your, your son was, was close to the connection. I, I just wonder, you know, Jim, tell me, I don't know that there's a better human being in baseball. Such a great dude, and I know you've known him for a while now. I, I wonder what you, I mean, I'm sure you expected Jim in the Hall of Fame. Oh, yeah. When you hit 612 home runs, you're going, <laughs> going to Cooperstown. Off. You should and, be, yeah. uh, As far as being a person, uh, he's one of those guys, you can tie him, but you can't beat him. Yeah. They don't come any better than yeah. Jim told me. I mean, he is, he's, he's the kind of guy that, as a dad, you'd like to have your daughter marry. You know what I mean? He's the kind yeah. of guy that you'd love to see the father of your grandchildren. He's, he's just a wonderful person, and he, he's very, very honest. You know, I remember one time when he was with Cleveland, we went in there, and Jimmy and I had, had a pretty good relationship, and he was in a big funk. And he told me, he says, Hawk, he says, I'm going to do something that not, I've never heard anybody else doing. I said, what's that? He said, I'm not going to try to go to the opposite field or go to the left field and ping my way out of this. I'm going to swing my way out of this slump. <laughs> and damn if he didn't hit two home runs that night and he beat us. <laughs> so, but he went up there and struck out the first two times, swinging as hard as he could go. But he, he's had fun. He's never lost his childlike qualities. Yeah. And that is so important in life and it's so important certainly in, in baseball and sports, Major League Sports. you got to retain your childlike qualities. And there's so many guys today then unfortunately, they're, they're so regimented coming up, and the childlike qualities start to slip away. Yeah. And then they start making real big money, and then they slip away a little bit more. And the guys who retain them, inevitably the guys who have a long career and, and, and go to Cooperstown, almost all those, guys, all those guys that went in have retained their childlike qualities. Right. And, and, uh, and Jimmy is one of those guys, he's going to be a tremendous asset to uh, the hitters in our organization because of the fact he knows what he's talking about. He's been there and done that. Yeah, it's, he's not just talking theory. Right, that's yeah. exactly right. Yeah. That's the, way, the great way to frame it, too, because a lot of them just talk theory. He's been there and done it. Yeah, yeah. well, again, congratulations to Jim Tomey because, uh, you know, he's, he is a great guy, and nobody deserves it more than he does. Right. And, and Ken Hawk Harrelson, um, I was, I'm going to be. It's going to be a very that uh, that th third game of the uh, Cubs at Sox series in September, when the when the Sox beat the Cubs, of course. Uh, it's going to that's gonna, it's going to be bittersweet because your last day, man. So I'm uh, I'm just looking, looking forward, forward for a win. Yeah, okay, but I'm not looking <laughs> forward to you being gone. 
<laughs> you know, I, I, I'm, a, I'm an emotional guy. I, I always have been, and, and uh, there will be tears coming down my cheeks. There's no question about that. Uh, to have the honor of being in this great city for so many years. Yeah. And I'm going to probably give you a toast. In fact, I'll give it to you right now. we got a lot of Sox fans out here. You know, when you take a man's money, you take a man's money. <laughs> but when you take a man's time, you take a little part of his life. Thanks, Hawk. You guys have given me 33 years you. of your life. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Hawk. Thank you.